Yes, I had to do this one. I haven't even read it. <laughs> the title was enough for me. I found a bunch of these all over the ground by my work. Yeah, maybe they were somebody's private stash. I don't know. They're a pretty eclectic bunch, but this one is from the Independent Baptist Church, and I'll give the information below. Oh, they start with a quote from Albert Einstein. Hmm. Everyone who is seriously interested in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe. Yeah, well, what if that's Odin or Apollo or Zeus or uh, the divine Brahma? Good enough for you guys, huh? Pissing off the dog over there. Uh, he'd like me if he knew me, though. Um, a spirit vastly superior to that of man, and one in the face of which we, with our modest powers, must feel humble. That sounds like Odin to me. Anyway, Albert Einstein said that dribble. Have you ever looked up into the heavens at night? Hell yeah. One of my favorite things to do. Or felt a tiny baby grip your finger? Done that too. That was, wow, my finger looked huge. <laughs> and been filled with wonder? Yeah, all those things. I have a sense of wonder. <sighs> the world is filled with wonder everywhere we look. I agree. And I'm still curious about things. I haven't canceled out my curiosity and decided I have all the answers. They were given to me in Sunday school. <laughs> or whatever. The marvels of nature. Who made all of this? It must have been an anthropomorphic power. Did it just happen? Or is there really a God who created it? A God, although they capitalized God. It could have been, you know, um, a Hura Mazda. Uh, it could have been um, Ra. I don't know. You're not convincing me about Jesus and the Holy Bible. At best, all you can do is put forth a deistic argument. Hey. Right. Yeah. Over his. They're really a God who created it, as the Bible says, and other crazy books. Can anyone really deny it? If you say there is no God, then all the wonders around you are just an accident. I don't know what they are. They're wonderful. I don't know if they're an accident or if there was a process. I, I'm not a scientist. I'm not an astrophysicist. All right. That doesn't mean that a invisible sky daddy did it. <laughs> All right. The billions of stars in the sky just happen to make themselves generate their own power and stay on course. They're on a course. Yeah, they were put in the sky for us to look up from this little teeny bubble of atmosphere in surrounded by vast space. Mm -hmm. Sorry, boy. Pissing that dog off. He's wagging his tail. The land just happened to have topsoil. Gee, you need a deity to make that happen, right? How could that just happen? How could a deity just happen? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's a terrible loop you can get caught in. There is no answer for the, for the answer. All right. Without which nothing could grow that's topsoil. Uh, the air we breathe! Only 50 miles deep in exactly the right composition to support life. The life that happened on this planet, that adapted to this planet. Does it mean life couldn't happen under different conditions? Just we wouldn't do so well there. Is just a, is it just another accident of the laws of physics? Accident? Look, it happened. 
Only if you try to attach meaning to things do they happen for a purpose or on accident. And that's a human thing. Shit happened. Stuff happens. Does it mean it needs a purpose? It doesn't mean it, that makes it an accident. It happened. We don't know all the answers. But I'm pretty sure a bunch of uh, desert dwellers didn't know that uh, in the Bronze Age either. All right. Did deposits of coal, zinc, gold, and uranium get there by accident? We're stuck in this loop here, aren't we? No wonder you haven't figured out anything. You've got this parameter looking through your, your god glasses. <laughs> and what prevents lakes from freezing solid? Probably solar power. All the way down to the bottom, making it impossible for fish to survive frigid winters. Uh, why does the Earth spin at a given speed? Because that's the speed it's spinning at. <laughs> Without slowing, so we have day and night. How do we know it isn't slowing? It might be in cosmic time, as in a long time, longer than people can handle. Because we deal in minutes, hours, days, weeks, months years, decades. You start getting into centuries and it starts getting fuzzy on us. Now imagine trillions and billions and bazillions. All right, just saying. I'm not a scientist or a philosopher or anything. I'm just a dude on YouTube, but even I can figure this out. All right. Who tilts it, the world? Uh, so we get seasons. It had to be a plan. Even though we can't live on most of this planet without artificial support of some kind, like there's places, you know, like Antarctica and stuff, you know? Was that an accident that that place is totally fucked up and we can't live on it without artificial means? We can't live at the bottom of the ocean? Why didn't he make it like that? I mean, come on. All right. No one really knows the why and how of the magnetic poles. Or think of the sun stroking a fire just warm enough to sustain us on Earth. Everything's about us. But not too close to fry us or too far away to freeze us. Well, if it had been, we wouldn't be talking about it. Who keeps things constant? Someone's got to be manning the switch. <laughs> yeah, this, the Earth is a spaceship. We need a pilot. <laughs> yeah. Right. Who keeps things constant? I said that. Can you believe these things just happened? Maybe for some cause, but not necessarily for some reason. Things happen because they could happen, okay? Isn't it more reasonable to believe that a supreme mind is behind all of them and everything that exists? No, that's not reasonable at all. And it lacks objectivity. Because this guy's looking through his Jesus glasses and he can't see what's beyond the frames. He can't turn his objective thinking to this, to the things he believes. So he's missing parts of his equation. The amazing human body. Oh, please. What about the human body? Yeah, why were we, why was I born with a foreskin so it had to get cut off and I was put through agony as an infant? Why is that? How come I have an appendix that doesn't do a damn thing except maybe kill you if you're not near a doctor in time. And why didn't they, they take my appendix out when they were cutting my foreskin off? Or why didn't they just leave them both and let me make my mind up? God made me and it said take that shit off. <laughs> it's an intricate combination of bones, muscles, nerves, and blood vessels. 
Spotlight 2020 Science. The scientists hope to have a supercomputer to rival the three-pound advantage, uh, three-pound average adult brain. I've heard about that, but it won't be easy. In 2007, scientists built a $30 million supercomputer that requires a $29 million operating budget. It has 5% of the computing ability of a human brain. The kidney contains approximately 145 miles of tiny tubes. It's amazing. And yet we swallow and breathe through the same tube. You know, and our fun stuff's next to our smelly stuff. Whatever. Great plan, man. Your knees go out, your backs get bad. People get migraine headaches. Is that a plan? People have chemical imbalances in their brain that make them have problems like schizophrenia and shit, which invents, causes this shit to happen, probably. <clears throat> yeah, that's a miracle, isn't it? I'm going to get through this. Sorry, man. <laughs> Should have read this first. All right. It supplies a circulatory system. Wait, what, what, what? sorry, missed one. Uh, tiny tubes. In a day, they filter around 50 gallons of blood, extracting up to two quarts of water and impurities. Well, yeah, and it goes wrong, and people need transplants. And back in the old days, people died horrible deaths. I mean, there was like one movie star before they had dialysis. I forgot her name. She died horribly of kidney failure, and it took her a long time, and she suffered a great deal. Great plan there, Big G. <sighs> then there's the heart, an unbelievably rugged organ. A four-chamber, four-valve pump that handles the equivalent of 2,000 gallons of blood daily. It supplies a circulatory system that has 100 thousand miles of vessels and in a lifetime beats two and one half billion times uh, that's a uh, hundred and eight thousand times a day wow before you say there is no God think about these marvels all of creation gives evidence that there is a God who created it all and since the Bible says that Uh, says that God's Son, Jesus. Somehow this all proves Jesus. See how they did that? I don't either. Um, created all things and holds everything together. God, Jesus did it all. What do we need the old man for? Oh, that's right, to be angry so and be unable to forgive people without blood. Uh, now, now, that little bit of, that little nugget came from uh, Colossians. 1, 16 and 17. Then we need to see how Jesus' life affects us. Never met the guy. Although, I work with a guy named Jesus, that's pretty close. The Creator enters His creation. Our Creator came to Earth on a mission to change disaster into victory. <laughs> uh. The Bible says that we're dead in trespasses and sins. And alienated from the life of God. And that's from Ephesians 2, 1, and 4.18. There you go. Uh, just as a body without physical life is physically dead. Yeah. Well, not really. Your hair keeps growing, your fingernails growing, and there's bacteria in you. You know, but yeah, basically you're over. <laughs> uh, so we need God's forgiveness of our sins and uh, wait, forgiveness of our sin and freedom from its penalty, which is spiritual death, eternal separation from God and hell. We all need. We are all in need of a right relationship with God. This wasn't a very thorough ex examination, now was it? Didn't bring up any possible uh, counterpoints, so it's not exactly fair and balanced. It's kind of like Fox News. 
That's why God sent Jesus to earth. The Bible tells us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16. I prefer Austin 3.16. Uh, Jesus willingly paid the ultimate price to save us from the consequences of sin. And there's more, Mark. All right. But his death on the cross, the sinless Jesus, by his death on the cross, the sinless Jesus paid the debt of our sins that we could never, uh, that we could never pay. Sure we can, if they say we will. <laughs> it's called the lake of fire, even if you're just a little bit guilty. And his resurrection three days later proved that he, it, that he, that what he claimed was true, and unless something else happened, like suggested in the end of Matthew. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, shall he shall yet he shall live. That's John 11:25. How do you believe in something when you're dead? Your brain activity stopped. You're not believing in stuff. You're dead. Just saying. The everlasting life will be yours if you acknowledge to God that you are a sinner and believe in your heart and bypass that that rotten intellect, you know, that asks too many questions. Uh, uh, sorry, I lost my place. Uh, believe in your heart that Jesus is the only way you can ever be forgiven. If that's your heart's desire, why not tell him? He's right up there. And he, his phone line is never busy. <laughs> You can pray to God in words like these. I love these Baptists, man. They're always giving us sample prayers in case we don't know how to do it. And it's in blue print. That's neat. Dear God, I believe that you are real. Case closed. I believe that your son Jesus came to earth and died in my place. He got his ass kicked in my place, got tortured in my place. Easy street from here on. Thank you, Jeebus. Because of my sins against you. Oh, I had a relative that bit into an apple or something. Um, thank you that he rose again. I want your forgiveness and I place my trust completely in you. For now and eternity. Amen. And that's the Independent Baptist Church. And I'll put this information below. And I hope that cleared things up. Maybe you should be believing in God. And that he had a kid who created everything, and but he needed his dad to create him. But they're the same guy, and they have the same ghost. And it really makes sense if you don't think about it. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. I'm having a pretty damn good one myself right now.